This video will be a brief discussion of the entrepreneur. You'll see from the bottom right hand corner of the screen that there are only 20 slides in this talk. So it's a short talk, but some of the points and some of the issues that are raised are important. So it's well worthwhile taking good notes and recording these for, for future discussion and perhaps even for assessment. So it's a brief discussion of the entrepreneur. Now the entrepreneur is someone who is generally alert to profit opportunities. That's a fairly standard definition uh, within the area of certainly of economics. The economic perspective of the entrepreneur is someone who is alert to profit opportunities. Someone who is aware of the possibility of profits and is able to organize and marshal resources and uh, organize, design, think about a product and enter the niche market and generate profits. So it's someone who is alert to profit opportunities. Uh, that's a definition put forward by a very famous economist called Israel Kersner. And Kersner believed that uh, this was the, uh, the proper view of the entrepreneur. We have to say here that uh, this is essentially a, a psychological process. It's someone who is alert to profit opportunities. Uh, alertness is in the mind. Not everybody is equally alert. Some people are very alert and some people are not alert at all. Um, it's the people who are aware of profit opportunities and who go for the profit opportunities, those are the ones we identify as entrepreneurs. And as to whether that ability to recognize profit opportunities is uh, given to us through nature, perhaps genetically from our parents or our grandparents, or, uh, or whether we, are, uh, we learn it, is difficult to say. Almost certainly, we can't teach entrepreneurship. Uh, if we could teach entrepreneurship, then everyone would be an entrepreneur. We could just simply teach entrepreneurship and everyone would become rich and everyone would become entrepreneurial. We know, in fact, that entrepreneurs, successful entrepreneurs, are few and far between. What we can do in education is to highlight the attributes of the entrepreneurs, highlight their successes and the, the methods they have employed. But we can't actually teach people to become entrepreneurs. So it's only some people who are alert to profit opportunities and these are people who have perhaps got certain psychological propensities. They've got the ability to see situations, perhaps see it differently to others. When Bill Gates developed Microsoft, uh, he saw an opportunity, he saw a gap in the market, and he had the, the technical expertise, the know-how, and the capacity, the mental capacity, to do something about that gap in the market. He was aware of a profit opportunity, he was alert to the profit opportunity, and went for it and eventually set up Microsoft and became a success. So the rewards for risk taking and entrepreneurs we have to say do take risks. Now they're as follows. The entrepreneur has authority over the business and this is one of the rewards that the entrepreneur gets. One of the, if you like, the perks that the entrepreneur gets from setting up the business. This means that the entrepreneur enjoys a greater degree of freedom as compared with a salaried employee. The entrepreneur is able to determine his or her hours of work or whether indeed he or she works on a particular day. The entrepreneur is much freer than someone who has to attend a factory or attend an office and perform certain functions according to a very uh, delineated and very specified course of action. So office work tends to be rule bound. 
there are certain rules and ways and procedures that need to be followed. The same in factories and the same in most industries. But entrepreneurs don't have those constraints. Entrepreneurs enjoy a lot of freedom. But of course, the free time that they've got or appear to have, they may be thinking and planning about products or gaps in markets or playing around with ideas for new uh, innovations, new changes, new products. So they're not actually wasting their time. They may be thinking about other things, uh, things commercial, which don't exist currently, but that could exist, and could exist because the entrepreneurs, as I said earlier, are alert to profit opportunities, they're aware of the gaps in the market, and they want to plug those gaps, and of course, make a profit as well. I should, I should, should say, before I move on to, to point two here, that uh, risk-taking seems to be part of the uh, situation confronting the entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs have no guarantee that their ideas are going to be good. They may come up with ideas and uh, make a prototype of, of a product and then try to conduct some market research to try to overcome the risk, to try to get a, an insight into what consumers or potential customers may think about the particular product. But there are risks. And, in fact, not all entrepreneurs are successful. Uh, many will try and fail. Their ideas perhaps were too innovative or perhaps not innovative enough or uh, were not seen as satisfying a real need in the market. Some entrepreneurs will come up with ideas that perhaps no one has thought of and they will be seen as very novel and very interesting and those entrepreneurs will go on to make a lot of uh, profit and become very successful. But the, the fact is that entrepreneurs at inception, right at the, the starting point, do face risks. Now the second point here, well the entrepreneur receives a profit and this is the reward for risk taking. So the entrepreneur receives a profit and, and that in fact may be one of the motivators for the entrepreneur to set up in business the opportunity to make a profit. In fact the entrepreneur may set up in business for all sorts of reasons not just profit, uh, may set up in business because he or she wants the enjoyment of doing it, the satisfaction of, of introducing a new product or a new method. Um, a new way of working or uh, a new process. So they may enjoy the, the status of doing it, the reputation, be seen as an innovator, to be seen as an entrepreneur. They may enjoy that and that may be the motivator. Or it could be profit. They simply want to make money. They want to make a lot of money. But profit is the reward for uh, risk taking. Uh, in economics, when we start our study of economics, we read that there are four factors of production. These factors of production are land, labour, capital and entrepreneurship. Now the return to land is rent. It's the rent on the land. Labour, well the return to labour is wages or salaries. Um, capital, the return to capital is the rate of return. So it's the it's the rate of return on the capital. And entrepreneurship, well the return to entrepreneurship is profit. So the four factors of production have four rewards. Uh, rent, uh, interest or return on the capital, uh, the the land is is the rent land labor is wages and salaries the capital is the rate of return and entrepreneurship is the level of profit 
Now, the role of profits in the economy, and often we can go through our studies of economics and, and many subject, subjects related to business and not fully appreciate the role of profits in the economy. Profits are very important within the economy. For a start, they encourage business startups. Uh, entrepreneurs want to know that they can make profits, otherwise they're going to be put off. If they can't make profits, uh, there's no incentive for them to, to start the business. And if they start a very successful business, ironically, they may be criticised by many people as uh, exploiting the market or making excess profits or becoming too rich. But that's why they started the business. And in starting the business, they supply products and services to customers. And they supply the products and services at prices that the customers can afford. Otherwise, the customers would not buy them and the business would not prosper. So they encourage business startups. That's one of the, um, the roles of profit in the economy. Profits also encourage innovation. Uh, it's the case that uh, when a company is established and making uh, a product and being successful, whilst it's doing that, the management will be looking to innovate the product, to further improve the product, to continue its life cycle, to extend the product, to extend its functionality, to give even better service to the customer and thereby uh, extend the life, extend the life of the product and the business. So the business community are constantly looking for innovation. If we think about Microsoft again, Microsoft started with Bill Gates and his colleagues and they started with the disk operating system known as DOS. Now by today's standards DOS would be seen as primitive but back when DOS first was first introduced it was uh, revolutionary, it was wonderful. And whilst everyone was coming to terms with the fact that they have an operating system that worked for computers. Whilst everyone was happy with that, the customers, Bill Gates and his colleagues were working on Windows. And when Windows finally came out, Windows 3.1, uh, it, was, it was a marvel. And then somehow DOS got forgotten. DOS faded into the background. And when Windows 3.1 came out, everyone was happy, and then Windows 95 came out later. But if we look at the market at this time, no one within the market actually demanded new versions of the product. This was Bill Gates and his colleagues innovating to extend the life of the, the company, to extend the life of the product. Now we've got to Windows 10. Profits also encourage efficiency. Companies that are efficient will survive. Efficient means perhaps that they are uh, low cost producers so they're able to compete effectively with other companies and they will survive as a consequence. So profits encourage efficiency. Uh, companies in trying to uh, make profit will look critically at their processes to optimize the processes and generate efficiencies. So that's the way the capitalist system works. It works through companies trying to become efficient, low-cost producers and if they become low-cost producers, their their profitability will increase. But of course, the profitability increases. It may encourage more companies to come into the market and set up because they know the market is quite lucrative. But profits encourage efficiency. They also encourage business expansion and business change. Uh, we live in a dynamic world. We don't live in one that's fixed. Dynamic 
because entrepreneurs are constantly looking for new methods of production, new ways to do things, new products, new services. So the entrepreneurs are constantly looking to expand the business, change the business, bring it up to date, make it more modern, more efficient. So businesses are changing all the time. Businesses are expanding. Some businesses may be contracting because the, the entrepreneur wants to focus on very small niche markets perhaps. But wh whichever direction it moves in, it's moving in an efficient manner. They encourage a source of internal finance for future investments. When companies are making profits then shareholders and investors will know about this and they will want to invest in that business because they will get a higher rate of return. A higher rate of return is attractive to the investors. So companies that are uh, generating profits uh, will have will find it very easy I should say to raise further capital perhaps for investment or for expansion or for to meet some corporate objective. Profits act as a measure of business efficiency. Um, we need to measure the uh, efficiency of businesses because we like to know which companies to invest in, we need, we need to know which companies are doing well, which will be uh, good employers and will be able to compete effectively with overseas competition and so we, we, generally speaking we like the idea of being able to measure the efficiency of businesses and one measure of the efficiency of businesses uh, is related to profits. If the company is making a lot of profit compared to let's say uh, the amount invested in the business so its return on capital is let's say very high then we would say that business is quite profitable and it's quite efficient and we can grade companies by looking at the return on the capital if they're using their capital effectively so profits are a useful indicator it's one part of the equation uh, profits could be in the sense the numerator and the total amount of, cap of capital implied within the business the denominator and dividing the two gives us an indication of how successful that business is in utilizing its resources so we're using a type of ratio analysis ratio comparison Now the characteristics of a successful entrepreneur, well amongst these are the following. Entrepreneurs generally speaking have good negotiating skills. They're not just alert to profit opportunities as I said earlier and they're not just aware of the need for profitability but they're also good at, ne at negotiating. They're able to negotiate with suppliers, with finance houses, with uh, customers uh, to bring their business into existence. If their product is quite innovative, if it's different, if it's uh, perhaps radically different to anything anyone has seen, then they may have problems in raising finance because investors have not seen the product before. It's quite, in a sense, experimental within the marketplace. So n the entrepreneurs have to be good communicators they have to be able to negotiate effectively with those institutions to ensure that the product is brought to market it's not just a concept and remains as a concept entrepreneurs tend to be hard working and ambitious people the literature is full of stories about entrepreneurs working long hours and uh, dedicating their all their spare time and all their working time indeed to developing products and ironing out problems and issues and uh, negotiating and trying to get trying to get the business started so 
They tend to be hard working and ambitious people. They want us to be successful and they're prepared to work hard to do that. Generally speaking, they're very independent minded. Uh, they don't follow the crowd. If they follow the crowd, they will make essentially the same products that are currently in the market. They make different products. The more, the more different the product is, the more novel the product is, the chances are, if it's successful, it will be very successful because it's so different. So the entrepreneurs don't follow the crowd. They, the entrepreneurs tend to be independent minded. They tend to come up with an idea which could be, as I said, radically different to anything that's in the market at the moment. They come up with the idea, they work hard to develop it, they, they make it, they negotiate with the institutions, they, they try to bring it to market. But they do it their way. So now, in this talk, what we've done is we've looked at a couple of key points. First of all, what entrepreneurs are, what, what are the, the definitions of entrepreneurs, and we come down quite heavily in favour of the alertness to business, the alertness to business uh, profitability and the possibility of profitability. So entrepreneurs are alert to business opportunities. Then we, we moved on to discuss uh, the the issues associated with generating profits and the importance of profitability and the uses of profitability. But we also mentioned that entrepreneurs were not necessarily fully committed to making profits. That may not be the, the motivator for every entrepreneur. It may be self-esteem, it may be recognition, it may be a sense of satisfaction for a job well done. And we ended the talk by just looking at the characteristics of successful entrepreneurs and we've identified just three here. Now this is a very brief talk. There are many other videos on the nature of entrepreneurs and uh, the characteristics of entrepreneurs. But this one's just a very brief one to get us started. It's a, a nice introduction to the idea of entrepreneurs and it's well worth making a note of the points here and adding these to the material in the subsequent videos. But that's all we're going to deal with here so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.